Hi, this is Ben Schreiber, and welcome to the Selection Sort Song and Code video, where I'll be showing you the Selection Sort music algo with rhyming pseudocode lyrics. Um, here's how the Selection Sort algorithm goes real fast. First, you find the smallest value in the list, put it at position 0. Find the second smallest value in the list, put it at position 1, so swap it with the value at position 1. Find the third smallest value in the list, swap it with the value at position 2, and you keep on doing this until the list is sorted. Now, if you'd like to see a little bit more in-depth explanation, please check out my intuition video. Otherwise, here's the song in code. Selection sort performs the same on lists of equal size. It uses constant extra space and runs in quadratic time. But in practice on small arrays, it's not too slow and can complement divide and conquer algos. So if selection sort can be used for your purposes, then remember the pseudocode verses. Create a variable called length that equals the list size. For loop counter i starting at zero, you should iterate length times. Find the smallest value in the list from index i to the ending one and swap it with the value at the ith position. And eventually, once you end for, you return from Selection sort. So I hope you thoroughly enjoyed the Selection Sort song. If you didn't enjoy it, I at least hope that you found it memorable. So now we are going to use these lyrics here to implement the Selection Sort algorithm. So the first thing I'm going to do is comment out the lines of analysis. And we can go through them real fast so we see their value and understand what they mean. So selection sort performs the same on lists of equal size. This means that it is not adaptive. So there's nothing in the selection sort procedure that would allow it to perform better on one list of size n than another. Um, it uses constant extra space and runs in quadratic time. So the memory it uses does not depend on the size of the input list. And the time that it runs has a quadratic relationship with the size of the input list. So in practice on small arrays, it's not too slow and can complement divide and conquer algorithms. Algos is short for algorithms. When divide and conquer algorithms like merge sort and quick sort break down their input list into smaller and smaller pieces, they can actually call selection sort when the pieces reach about 10 to 20 elements. And selection sort will sort them, and then they can return. So the base case of these algorithms actually becomes 10 to 20 elements as opposed to one element. If you don't know what a base case is, that's okay. It is not essential in understanding selection sort. So if selection sort can be used for your purposes, then remember these pseudocode verses. All right, let's do it. If you want to code the selection sort, we're going to use these pseudocode verses. Before I get into the pseudocode verses, let's explain what's going on here. So we have a list of values. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. They are in reverse order. We wish to sort them so that they are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. We're going to print out the state of the list before we sort them. So it's just going to print out this pretty much. And then we're going to run selection sort on them. And then we're going to see what they look like after selection sort has executed. So hopefully they'll be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 after selection sort. 
Okay, so we also have a stubbed out selection sort function, which is where we're going to insert our first line of pseudocode. Create a variable called length that equals the list size. So I'm going to comment this out so Python doesn't execute the pseudocode. It will not know what that means. So create a variable called length that equals the list size. So len counts how many elements are in the list. Our list of our list is called list of values. All right, so that's done. For loop counter i starting at zero, you should iterate length times. We're going to use a for statement here for i in range length. So if you're not familiar with the range function, let's take a look at what it does. So we're going to call range on 6, and it returns 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Now range has an implied lower bound of 0, and the input that we supplied it here, it considered an upper bound. So it actually cuts off at the integer before our upper bound, which is 5. So it gave us the elements 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 in what is called an iterable. So we can run a for loop on each one of these elements. Now, if we did want to supply a lower bound, we could say range one through six, and it'll give us the elements one, two, three, four, five. Now, we are gonna to wanna to include the zero element because our list starts at position zero and we're going to want to loop through the indices 0 to the ending one. So back to the code. So the for statement says for every item in range length, do whatever is indented inside of the for loop. We're calling the item i here. It can be called anything, but since its purpose is to be a loop counter, it is conventional to call it i. So, I think we're ready for the next step. Find the smallest value in the list from index i to the ending one. So to do this, we'll create a function called find min location, and it will take in our list of values and a lower bound index, because we want to find the minimum value from position i to the ending one. And it will return the location of the minimum value in that range. We'll call that min location. Okay, so I'm just going to write a little comment here. So to do this, we'll initially set the minimum location to be the low index. and we're gonna loop through the positions after it. So here we are gonna use a lower bound for the range statement. Uh, I'll create a variable called length again. The reason why I'm creating a variable called length outside of the for loop is because after each iteration, it has to compute the length of the list of values and if you have a really, really long list of values, this could actually be computationally expensive. So if we've just computed it right up front, it could save us a little bit of time. So if we find a value that's less than the one at min location, so if the value at position i is less than the one at our min location, we're going to set our lo min location equal to i because that's where the smallest value is that we've seen so far.
So once we exit this loop, we're going to return the minimum location. All right, so now we're back in selection sort. Next line. So we're going to swap the value at min location with the one at the ith position. Um, we're probably going to want to declare a function for this. So we'll say it has parameters list of values. Um, it's going to want it, the two indices which we wish to swap the values of. So that's going to be i and min location. So the first thing we're going to do in swap is store the value at position i. We'll call it was at i. We're going to set the value at i to be the one at min location. So they're going to have the same values now. All right, now since if we were to say list of values min location equals list of values i, we'd be setting it equal to the same exact thing. We need to set the list of values min location equal to the value that was at index i. Okay, so I think this is it for the swap function. And now we only have one more line of pseudocode. Eventually, once you end for, you return from selection sort. So once you exit this for loop, selection sort is finished. Now, let's see if we're finished. Okay, so we see the list before the sort was in reverse order, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And after we've run selection sort, it is one, two, three, four, five. So each element to the right is greater than or equal to the one previous to it. So selection sort has done its job. Finally, you can see that the pseudocode helped us write the algorithm in small chunks, which helped organize the program's flow and allowed us to focus on one detail at a time. Now, it also provides us with a reference, so after a few months from writing the program, we can see in plain English how the code will work. This is also useful if somebody wants to use the code and wants to see how it works. So if you learn the song, you have a roadmap for how to program the algorithm, and you have documentation for when you or somebody else needs it later on. So I hope you found this video informative. Uh, you learn the song by practicing it over and over and over again, and eventually you'll wake up one morning and, and it'll be there for you. Um, now, if you feel embarrassed at all singing a song about selection sort, don't. If anybody asks what the heck you're doing when you're singing it, you just tell them that you're drilling sorting algorithms into your head, and if they make fun of you, they're not worth your time. They don't know what this is about. Now. If you enjoyed this video, please share it with your friend. And if you have any feedback, please share it with me. And I thank you for watching.